After a series of gruesome murders on Valentine's Day, a small mining town vows to never celebrate Valentine's Day again. Until 20 years later, and they celebrate Valentine's Day again, and the killer returns. Hello and welcome back to Fatal Film, a watch-along horror movie video series where every two weeks I give you guys a horror movie, and then we sit down and we talk about it. This week we watched the Canadian Valentine's Day themed horror movie, My Bloody Valentine. And stick around to the end of this video for next episode's movie. My Bloody Valentine, I guess, I guess every holiday needs to have its own like slasher horror movie, I guess, right? And the movie uses the holiday to pretty good effect. One of the ongoing kind of like things that the killer keeps doing is ripping out the hearts of his victims. And the dude, the balls on this man, he straight up sends them to the police. So the movie takes place in this small mining town, and then 20 years after this like series of gruesome murders, I guess a lot of the, the younger people in the town, they think it's just a myth, they think it's, you know, long forgotten, and there's nothing to worry about, and so they want to have this big like Valentine's Day dance. A Valentine's Day dance, and don't get me wrong, these are not like high school students or anything like that. These are, these are adults, these are like full grown men and women who just like work in the mine, but they're, they're really passionate about this dance. And some of the older people in the town, there's like this one bartender keeps warning them, don't celebrate Valentine's Day, or Harry will come and get your ass. Forget about having a party at all tomorrow night, or you'll be sorry. And I gotta say, I think one of the strengths of the movie is like the backstory of the killer. Let's just go ahead and call him the miner. Basically, the story goes 20 years ago on Valentine's Day, there was this big Valentine's Day dance, and there were still some miners working down in the mine, you know, just trying to, trying to quickly finish up for the day to go and join all of the festivities. Well, I guess they were in such a rush to finish up and join the Valentine's Day party that they didn't take all of the safety precautions, and there ended up being an explosion down in the mine, resulting in a cave-in, trapping about five people down in the mine. And they were trapped down there for six weeks with one survivor. For six weeks he was down there, it drove him to cannibalism. So this guy, his name was Harry, and the whole experience basically made him insane. So he returns to the town one year later, completely out of his mind, dressed up in full minor attire, and goes on a killing spree. And that's when the town vows to never celebrate Valentine's Day again. So that was kind of like the backstory of the minor. So flash forward 20 years, the town's gonna celebrate Valentine's Day once again. So they bring in this older lady to kind of coordinate and plan this big event. She's super passionate about Valentine's Day. The entire town is decked out in Valentine's Day decorations. It's kind of extra, it's kind of insane. Like, I don't know who the hell celebrates Valentine's this hard. They celebrated the shit out of Valentine's Day in this town. So the lady who was planning this whole event, she ends up becoming the first victim of the miner. And it's actually the police chief who ends up discovering her body. And my god, this scene might be one of the most shocking, like, jump scare moments in the entire movie. Because the miner, he put her in a clothes dryer and she must have been in there for hours and hours and hours because when the police chief discovers her, She's all like burnt and dried out and disgusting looking. It's really one of the most shocking scenes of the movie. I was just like, holy crap. For me, it was really one of the most shocking scenes in the movie. I was not expecting that at all. So because of that, the police chief decides to cancel Valentine's. Cancel Valentine's Day, cancel the dance. A lot of the workers from the mine, they're super disappointed. So what do they do? They decide to host a party of their own. They don't know where else to do it. So hey, let's go and have a Valentine's Day party down in the mine <laughs> it's like what why at the mine it's all dirty it's dank it's like they work there but you know what for setting up atmosphere for the purpose of the film we'll go with it it works whatever i think the movie's really just looking for some kind of excuse any excuse just to get a bunch of people down in the mine to kill them and the movie's got kind of like a whodunit like murder mystery aspect to it as well because yes we're led to believe that the killer is the miner from 20 years ago, that the killer is Harry, but at the same time you never really see the killer's face, he's always wearing the miner mask, so really the killer could be anyone. So that's pretty much the plot of My Bloody Valentine. I think the backstory of the miner is probably one of the stronger elements of the movie, because then the back half of the movie just becomes all about the kills and the suspense. And it does have some pretty good kills, I'm not gonna lie, I was I was pretty impressed with some of them. I already mentioned the uh, the clothes dryer scene, then there's also a scene with like a shower and like a shower faucet. This, this girl gets impaled on it and the water ends up coming out of her mouth. There's kind of like this gross like hot dog scene. Some of the kills are not bad, the special effects had me pretty impressed. Like a lot of it's all practical because this is 1981. For some 1981 practical effects on like this small budget Canadian slasher film, 
it's really not that bad. Though one of the biggest problems that I had with this movie had a lot to do with the cast of characters. You're not really given, like, a main character to root for. There's no real clear, like, protagonist or anyone that you can really identify with. Truth be told, a lot of the cast, a lot of the guys that work down in the mine especially, they're all a bunch of fucking just, like, super obnoxious buffoons. <laughs> so many of these guys are so over the top and, like, cringy almost. And then you have, like, your, I guess you do have, like, your main female lead character, Sarah, but it's even hard to really kind of, like, get behind her and, like, root for her because, you know, she is, like, there's, like, this love triangle thing going on that she has with these two guys and everyone involved in that whole love triangle, they're all, they all kind of suck. So it's hard to be too invested in these characters and because of that, it kind of removes a little bit of the, a little bit of the suspense if you're hoping that a certain character lives or anything like that. It's definitely not the, definitely not the strength of the movie. Where I think a lot of the strength of the movie does lie is in its mood and its, its setting, its atmosphere, and some of the special effects behind the kills. And the movie does try to have like this big like plot twist reveal at the end. Oh, the killer the whole time was and Then at the end he like escapes and gives out this like menacing laugh and I can tell like the movie was trying to set itself up for like a sequel or something like that, but that obviously never ended up happening. You know, My Bloody Valentine released in 1981, definitely kind of like piggybacking off of the success, the major success of movies like Halloween and Friday the 13th. And it was kind of just like a Me Too type movie. It's not like breaking any new ground or anything like that, but it does have a unique villain with an interesting backstory and a pretty creepy atmosphere. Some of the better kills I've seen in an 80s slasher film. Also, the pacing is pretty solid. It's like a 90 minute movie. 90 minutes is like, for me, like the sweet spot of how long a slasher movie should be. I give this movie like a seven out of 10. It's not groundbreaking, it's not revolutionary, but it's definitely a very solid entry in the 80s horror slasher genre. Anyways, that is it for my review of My Bloody Valentine, and uh, I was thinking about what are we gonna watch next, and do you know what? I'm kind of, I'm kind of got a bit of an urge to go and watch some Japanese horror. I've always found Asian horror to be super interesting. They definitely have like different sensibilities than Western horror and what what is scary and what's not. And I would say like around the 90s and the 2000s, I would say like Asian horror was better than Western horror during that time. In fact, like Western horror was almost trying to like catch up and was copying a lot of Asian horror at the time with movies like The Grudge and The Ring and Pulse and all that kind of stuff. And one of my favorite Western remakes was The Ring. But I have never seen the Japanese original. So for next episode of Fatal Film, we're gonna watch the 1998 Japanese horror movie, Ring or Ringu. I'm real excited about this one, and we will talk about it in two weeks' time. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.